Okay. <laughs> Okay, so who's next? <laughs> Wells of no nothings and no at alls. God, you have a headache. Is it dehydration? Only if you're thirsty for companionship. Are you hurt? Only your heart. It aches for more pals. Is it withdrawal? Only from your addiction to new bodies. Really, there's only one cure for what ails you. Friendship. You wonder whose sweet medicine you'll be imbibing this time. Gelech. Kirona Kasun. It's a chilly night. Not in a bad way, though. It's the kind of crisp air that invigorates you. You think you might just fuck around and make a friend. You're busy breathing in a big old lungful of the stuff when you hear someone call out behind you. Excuse me, alien. I would like a word. It's phrased like a request, but delivered like a command. You don't recognize the voice, so you do some mental calculations as you turn. Whoever it is seems like they know who you are, which could be good or really, really bad. You could make it to Zebra's Hive in a few blocks if you had to make a run for it. That's not exactly a place you'd like to take sanctuary, though, so you figure the risk of talking to this mystery troll is worth it. By the time you've rotated around to face them, you've got a big friendly grin on. It's a bit of work to keep it there when you see who it is. Tall, sharp suit, well filled out, curly hair, cute little Christmas tree looking horns, an expression that screams, would pay someone else to bisect you if you call anything about him cute. It's a good thing you didn't choose to run, because last time you saw this guy he was sprinting away from your sparkly self at top speeds. You'd have no chance. Oh. Oh. He strides toward you now with considerably less fear, but about as much purpose. Playing it friendly, you hold out your hand for him to shake. He takes it immediately, like it's an instinct. <clears throat> yes, yes, I'm, I'm Gaelic Kishihisi. You're the alien. Nice to meet you. Officially, etc., etc. It is imperative that we speak. As is a matter of some importance, I hope you will take my request seriously and follow me to my hive, where we can talk more openly. Footnote 1. It is in your best interest to comply. Footnote 2. <laughs> wow, okay then. We got a wordy motherfucker over here, huh? A short and sweet, hey, let's hang out, would have worked on your friend thirsty self, but that's fine. We don't have anything else to be doing, so why not follow this pushy high blood back to his house? Wonderful. This way. He stays true to his word and doesn't say anything else as he leads you towards his hive, but you watch the way he clenches his teeth and flicks his eyes back at you as he walks. He's about to explode, holding it all in. You walk a little slower, just to bask in the need emanating off him. Still dizzy with the feeling of having your presence wanted so badly, you trip a bit, heading up a wide flight of stairs. And there are a lot of them. Jesus, he could have warned you at least. You look up as you pull yourself to your feet. The stairs lead up to an old stone building, stone building covered with ivy that creeps around some pointy topped windows and up to the tops of turrets. It looks like the kind of place a crusty old professor might walk up, followed by a flock of khaki-clad rich boys. The door opens with a creak. You do not hear anyone debating the difference between a movie and a film in there, but you do hear bleeding. Sounds reasonable. Once inside, Gaelic beckons you through the foyer and into another room, this time unlatching what looks like a very tall metal baby gate to let you both in. He checks the latch twice after he shuts it, then gestures to a pair of studded high back chairs on either side of the fire. Please take a seat. Uh, I will make you some coffee. You will not have had any like this before, as the taste is drastically different from the slop you get from a public coffee shop. Get no one. I'm getting open no notes. <laughs> It is possible your palate is not experienced enough to tell the difference, but I can walk you through the simpler points. Okay. Cool. You do take that seat, and you look around while he fucks with an antique espresso machine. He has a desk covered in papers, open books, and a typewriter, 
And along the walls there are bookshelves leading up to the vaulted ceiling. Everything has an air of purposeful messiness to it, like he pulled some of his cooler titles to leave laying around for you to see. How flattering. He mentioned that this must be one of those personal jerk-off book hives Tizius was talking about. Excuse me? Oh, uh, never mind. You clear your throat and ask him what he wanted to talk about. He hands you a cup and sits down in the other chair. Uh, of course, I, I just wanted to clear up a misunderstanding between us. Uh, you may be- uh, sorry, footnote one. Can you read a footnote? Uh, specifically, you misunderstanding me. You may be under the false impression that I am uninformed via the attributes of rainbow drinkers. You may even think that you successfully fooled me into thinking you were one yourself when we met first met. Uh, I had just not previously encountered one in real life, uh, nor had I ever seen an alien, for that matter. Alright, footnote me again. <laughs> uh, I have spent considerable time in the interim researching, of course, uh, which is why I was able to track you down so easily. Uh, furthermore, when I saw you before, you were in the company of one Tagara Gordiak, the rainbow fucker extraordinaire. I was making the most reasonable assumption possible, giving the information I had available. It makes complete sense if you think about it. Yeah. He looks at you expectantly. Oh, uh, you guess it's your turn to say something. <laughs> Is that, uh, all? Oh, wow, I don't give a shit, my dude. You laugh and then realize that he's 100% serious. He really cares that much what you think of him. It reminds you a bit of you a few months ago, or, you know, a few days ago. Still, you know what it's like. You try to tread the line between humoring him and easing him out of having to care that fucking much. You tell him you'd like him, even if he was a complete rube, a total rainbow-drinking lore idiot. If his incompetence knew no bounds, oh, I get it. Oh heck. If the barely contained panic in his eyes is any indication, he isn't at all placated by that. You cut off that line of friend finagling and try something you hope is a little more speed. It must be cool to have a primary source sitting in his own jerk off book hive, though, right? He exhales, gathering himself a little. I'm, I'm not sure why you keep calling it that. Stop immediately. But I do admit I'm interested in the chance to learn more about you. His fingers twitch. You hope he doesn't mean in the, like, creepy dissection kind of way. You are free to leave, right? You glance anxiously at the locked baby gate. What? Well, of course you can leave. I, just because I'm a high blood doesn't mean I'm a fucking sadist. You know by now, but predilection is not bound to any one cast. I have more important things to be doing. <laughs> Usually. Uh, my interest in you is purely academic and friendly. Would know too. Uh, I know you're amenable to that kind of thing. Uh, furthermore, that gate is not for you. Would know three. <laughs> Do not worry about it. Uh, if all goes well this evening, we will not even have to make use of it. You do definitely worry about it, but not in a present, actionable way. Just in the sort of under-the-surface self-preservation way you've worried about. Uh, you know, everything that's tried to end your run here in Alternia so far. Plus, he offered you friendship. You'll reach your heart into that monkey trap any day. Hell yeah, then. You throw your arms out, toss your head, and tell him you're all ready to be studied and subsequently friended. Gaelic doesn't pounce right on that, though. Mostly he looks uncomfortable, which doesn't stop him from talking. Uh, I, I do have considerable interest in understanding the pathos of the alien. Uh, what I really want to know is what makes you so magnetic. All observable criteria points to you not being much to look at. There seems to be something about you that draws people in. I apologize if you're offended. Uh, that isn't even on the top ten list of insults you've heard since landing, so you brush it off just fine. Plus, you have it on good authority that your legs are nice. You flex those bad girls in order to give yourself a little self-esteem boost. Uh, I was wondering if you had emissarial status, but the more I learn about you, the more difficult it becomes to make any sense of your plans. Uh, accounts of your activities contradict each other almost every turn. You're either the most suave and well-connected point of attention I've ever heard of, or you're running around with no clue what you're doing, and it somehow works out for you anyway. 
would not one. I'm strongly leaning toward the latter, especially after this meeting. Subfoot note one. For example, what the fuck are you doing with your legs right now? Uh, is that supposed to be impressive to me? I mean, it's worked before. <laughs> A low, frustrated clicking rumbles in his throat. He puts his hot coffee aside and crosses his legs. Uh, this is the sort of thing I'm talking about. I know all about your antics, leg-based and otherwise. I just cannot work out what the draw is. Quick note one. Uh, uh, again, no offense is intended, uh, and if you feel that way, that is on you. I'm just trying to understand. Why do people like this? He seems pretty fixated on this. You wonder if, perhaps, he has some hidden reason for wanting to know why other trolls might be into your freaky little self. Some sort of personal interest in another troll's friendship decisions and inclinations and interests. Just, you know, maybe. You wait for him to blush, but he doesn't. He does start talking very quickly, though. Uh, first of all, uh, I do not know what you mean by that. I do not base my self-worth on anything so external. Uh, hypothetically, if I did happen to be invested in what someone else thought of me, I could not tell you about it. Put note one. Put <laughs> note. Put note is not reachable for me. Oh no. <laughs> uh, I think I can mouse over it. Oh, doesn't like that. <laughs> you probably would just... You probably would just tell him anyway. Sub footnote one. By if I mean any hypothetical mutual acquaintance. Uh, furthermore, just because I'm not a freak, does not mean I do not have desirable traits. You think he'd probably keep going forever, now that he's started letting it all out, but there's a sound behind you that shuts him the fuck up. You both turn to see his Lucis, a big scruffy goat, gently head headbutting the baby gate. It looks extremely friendable. Stay on topic. Feed the beast! Friend. Lucis. <laughs> As much fun as it is to get monologued at, you opt for a change in pace and ask Gaelic if this goat is a good boy. Uh, if you call breaking into my book hive and eating important chapters of my manuscript good, then yes. Put note one. Eh. Put note me. Uh, it's in the pre novel phase, if you're wondering. It's more of an experiential word rumpus. He's the best. Put note two. To, to be fair, raising and providing for me also makes his presence in my life a net positive. He sighs when he says it, a mix of frustrated and fond. You pull an apple-adjacent fruit from your hoodie pouch. You never know when you might have to spend the day hiding in an alley, so pocket snacks that don't make you puke are extremely useful. You offer it to the Lucis, and he uses his teeth and tongue to pull it through him through a hole in the gate. Nice. You don't have to have a crisis about whether or not you should let him in the room, because once he swallowed his snack, you try to down the hallway. You mosey over toward Gaelic, plop back down in the chair, and let him know you're ready to get this fact exchange party started. You wonder to yourself what kind of information actually exists about aliens, you mean humans, on Alternia. The fact that you have started thinking of yourself as the alien is mostly fine, you figure. It's what the trolls vibe with, which is what you're all about in the end, but it could be cool, maybe, to hear about the history of humankind from their perspective. You've been curious, and if anyone would know, it would be this fucking nerd. You ask. Well, there's absolutely nothing. I, I've read all kinds of reports on other alien races. Uh, I can pull those for you if, you, if you'd like. You know, one. Uh, if what you're after are bloody accounts of the destruction of entire species, or painstakingly detailed logbooks of resources taken from various planetary systems by our forces? Subfootnote 1. Uh, the economics involved would probably go over your nug bone. <laughs> As for your species, uh, I can confidently say there is no recorded history of your kind on Alternia. Footnote 2. Footnote 2 me. Apparently I can't get that one either. 
back. All right, I can hit either of them to bring him up. If, if it existed, I would know about it. Oh. Wow. So you're the first of your kind to visit, huh? You flex again and brag that maybe that's a secret to why everyone is so hot for your friendship. But even Gaelic can tell you're not really feeling it. Uh, if you say so. There's some kind of high blood equivalent back home? Is that why you're so friendable here? With note one. But you're supposedly friendable. Uh, I still have yet to feel the impulse. Uh, what is your planet's system of government, and where do you fit into it? Your main off-world exports. What were some defining moments in your species development? Uh, have you formed any bonds over here that you would say fit your planet's equivalent of the quadrant system? Uh, footnote two. Uh, if so, uh, with who? You're not ready to take this space, SAT. You're too busy trying to sort through the idea that you're the literal only option for him to learn any of this shit. The only one of your kind around. You feel like the frame surrounding your life has shifted, like everything around you is zoomed out to the widest angle, with you, a tiny speck in the corner, invisible to the naked eye. Whew, maybe you should sit down. Ah, oh, fuck. You already were sitting down. Maybe you should lie down. You crawl onto the floor, which Gaelic probably won't like, but you're too busy having an existential crisis to care. Aw, oh, damn it, that's a lie, too. You definitely still care what he thinks of you. It isn't the first time you felt overwhelmed by your situation since you landed. It isn't even the hundredth, honestly. It's just that you kind of always had a back pocket assumption that there's that there'd be some way out of this. Sure, you've been having fun making friends and allies, assembling a new wardrobe, and picking up weird survival skills. It just hadn't quite hit you that this might be all that was left for you. For real. Uh, is this floor wriggling another alien friendship ritual I just do not grasp the allure of? Uh, or are you spontaneously suffering? Footnote 1. Uh, I'm not sure how I'm supposed to tell the difference. Uh, please stop whatever this is. You want to answer him, but world words feel so far away in this moment. You try to call up how you crashed, or what the ass you were doing in a spaceship to begin with. Are you even a certified astronaut? Do you have an advanced degree? Do you have hands? Your vision blurs and you feel queasy. You need air. A lot of it. You run toward the closest available source. A wide window. Defenestrating yourself is maybe not the best option, but it is the one you are currently the most emotionally attuned to, so that is what the fuck you do. Luckily, the panes of the window open like French doors, and you're still on the first floor. You spill out without breaking any glass or limbs. Behind you, Gaelic hollers. It still feels nice outside. You lay there and breathe in and out, and try to pull your shit together. From your prone position, you can see Gaelic with one leg up over the windowsill, shake his head, and then pull it back and turn away. He certainly looks fit enough to be able to manage that leap, but of course he wouldn't bother. He should give up on your hot mess of an alien self. You're fine wasting away out here like yesterday's banana peels anyway. You're ready to take a depression nap right then and there when you hear the front door open. Gaelic is stomping towards you, flushed and fuming. He looms above you, his large frame quaking with anger. Listen here, you little chug shoot maggot. Shoot maggot. For that shuggernaut. Uh, shoot maggot. I have opened my home to you. Uh, I have opened my mind to the possibility of understanding you, despite multiple instances of you not offering me the same courtesy. Uh, I only wanted to correct your misconceptions about me and to have a chance to exchange some cultural understanding. Footnote 1. I have to be the worst ambassador I've ever heard of. Oh. No. You sit up and promise that he's been great. The best and smartest friend you've made yet. A great host. Excellent, even. It's not his fault you're not clicking like you do with other people. If that were true, why would you spend this entire visit acting like a fresh hat idiot? At this point, I have to conclude that you're mocking me, my genuine interest in you. No other explanation for your behavior. But note one. <laughs> ah. Sometimes you just can't reach. Do not begin to insult me by claiming otherwise. You try to explain that you were just in your feelings, uh, but he has stopped humoring you. He turns on his heel and stops back inside. 
You want to hope that he'll come back, the drive to understand, outweighing the drive to be done with your sorry ass, but you know he won't. You drag yourself to your feet and start the slow, lonely walk to somewhere, anywhere else. From the open window, his Lucis cocks his head to the side and softly bleeds his goodbyes. Bad end. The woo. Oof. Okay. Uh, is that uh, all? Man, what the fuck is this guy talking about? You thought whatever he wanted was going to be a way bigger deal. You want to get this straight, you say. He's dragged you all the way here, under a thick veil of secrecy, just so he could tell you he knows what he's talking about? That he actually was right and not wrong, smart and not dumb, specifically about rainbow drinkers? Uh, yes. But not one. Technically not only specifically about that topic, but that is the pertinent piece of information in this conversational context. Uh, is this confusing to you? Uh, I cannot have people thinking incorrect things about me. Cool, no, you were just checking. You tap your fingers on the leather arm of the chair. Is that all he wanted from you? Uh, oh, uh, yes, I suppose. Well, as long as we're in agreement, I do not intend to spread any misinformation. You promise. That is great news. There's a long pause. He looks disappointed somehow. You're not sure if this is what he was expecting, but it sure as hell is what is transpiring. Uh, I'll show you out. Oh man. <laughs> mm -hmm. The mild. <laughs> Stay on topic. Um, please ignore him, with note one. He will wander away in a minute. He just wants to get in here and cause problems. You think hard to yourself about this. You really want to go pet the big goat dad, but you want to dish about this guy's love life even more. You've heard some about this situation from the other side, of course, but you really shouldn't get let Gaelic know that Tagara tells you about their tentative and awkward, pitchish flirtation. Unless, you know, it helps you get more friends. No! You slap your own cheek to snap yourself out of it. No secret spilling. Gaelic leans away from you and against the back of his chair. Oh, fuck. You're really not doing anything to change my impression of you. You have an idea, so you cut him off before he can monologue you to death. You tell him that it sounds to you like what's really bothering him, a regular, non-freaky guy, is that he's jealous of your free-spirited befriendability. He wants what you've got. He glares at you, his breathing quickening. Ooh yeah, hit a nerve. I do not want anything of yours, but not one. What is it you mean by that, though? What is it exactly that you've got? He's not... Or subfoot note one. Uh, never mind. Redact that. But reiterate my previous non covetous stance. <laughs> Interrupting him has worked pretty well so far, so you try it again. Let's cut the shit, you say. There's no reason for him to hide anything from you. First of all, you already promised to like him, no matter what. Secondly, you know what it's like to want to impress someone. And finally, you know all about how to be a huge motherfucking weirdo. So, why doesn't he let you show him how to walk on the wild side? He can take a few pointers from Alternia's biggest freak. You can see the ensuing makeover montage already, and you start bouncing a bit in your seat. I have zero interest in you. Okay, that won't do it. You try one more tactic, telling him you guess he just doesn't mind not knowing shit about how to be freak. Old Gaelic, they'll all say. Smart at how to be boring, 
And a real big dumbass about weird stuff. Ah, I see what you're doing. Footnote 1. Uh, unfortunately for me, it will absolutely work. <laughs> it stands to reason that allowing you to broaden my horizons with your alien ways will only serve to increase my cultural competence. Right, so what'll it be? Shopping for a new, uh, more casual suit, or something wilder? Spicy undergarments? Dyeing your hair? Other weirder body mod? <laughs> he is so cute. Gaelic's eyebrows shoot up. That last one sounds interesting. Wow, he's really ready to go whole ass, huh? You weren't expecting that from this guy. You guessed maybe he was waiting for an excuse to try something. That, or he really can't deal with not being Alterney's biggest obnoxious know-it-all. Go big or get cold, as they say. Damn, that probably is what they say. Anyway, you can't wait to get this show on the road. You tell him you even know a guy that can probably help him out. Be discreet. Uh, I'm not going to leap into this, but I do need to protect my privacy, of course. Oh, for sure. You mean, like, probably. His brow furrows, either at your continued interruption or your hesitance, so you waste no more you no more time and whip out your palm husk. You pull up the secret gripe profile you got Malik to make so you can keep in touch and call him up. What's up, Rebel buddy? We get right to it. Tell him you made a new friend who's looking to get a new hole put in him. Behind, you hear Gaelic choke on his coffee. Uh, artistically, an aesthetic hole. Gaelic shrugs weakly, his eyes still wide. <laughs> uh, or something similar. Hell yeah. Anything for you, but. Malek's eyes dart from your face to the room behind you. You're not sure how much you can see through the screen, though. My gear is easy to pack, so I'll be over soon. I'll bring options. You start to give him directions, but he stops you. Don't worry, I know exactly where you are. Your palm host is low jacked. You could be cool with that. See you soon. <laughs> Malik hangs up, and you grin at Gaelic to reassure him. This sure seems like a manageable situation. He offers you more coffee, which you take, because you are a polite guest. Gaelic starts ideating in a small leather-bound notebook, so you mostly watch, listen to him explain the brainstorming process, take sips, and wish the girl could come back. Eventually, you hear soft footsteps approaching. Gaelic jumps when Malak opens the baby gate. How did you get in the front door? I hacked it. Gaelic's mouth opens and shuts a few times. His eyes dart between your and Malak's matching hoodies. Just kidding. Your operation's pretty low tech for an indigo, unfortunately. Your loose just let me in. Anyway, I'm Malak. And from behind him, a proud bleeding. Hell yes. Gaelic looks around and wrings his hands. There's a lot going on all of a sudden. He points to you. Uh, you, alien. Oh, hold on to my looses. He cannot be unsupervised in here, or he will eat everything. Uh, and as for you, Malak, hello. My name is Gaelic Shigisi. Welcome to my hive, with my one. Uh, things are typically not so hectic in here. Uh, I apologize. That's no problem. I hear you want to get freaky. Gaelic tugs at the, tugs at the bottom of his suit jacket, straightening it reflexively. Poor dude. You want to tell him you're proud of him for going so far out of his depth, but he seems to be holding his own here. Plus, the goat really wants to make a snack out of some old paperbacks. You take your job seriously and hold on tight to his neck. Uh, yes, that's correct. I hear you have the tools to help me achieve this. Uh, I'm open to a wide range of modifications, but not one. Uh, I will need to be able to hide it easily under clothing, however. My notebook has some sketches, but no two. Uh, look only at the last six pages. Click to an unauthorized section, and you'll lose the privilege of losing, using your eyes ever again. <laughs> you want to dutifully look and not touch, too, but wrangling a big goat is a full-time job. Malek holds the notebook for you both to see. Wow, Gaelic's not a bad artist, actually. Still, you have to kind of turn your head and squint to make out what is going on in a couple of the sketches. You guess there are still a few surprises left for you in the brave new world of trolling out of him, huh? 
He points at the sketch you like best with one hand as you scramble to keep hold of a fistful of wiggly loosest fur with the other. Yeah, I can work with that. Hell yeah, button up, get some layers off. Kalix flicks his eyes to you and you give him a big supportive thumbs up. You look politely away when he starts taking off his jacket. Instead, you focus on your job, and, oh, you have some pocket snacks. You pull out some, mostly not for his fruit, and offer it to Gaelic Lucis. He chomps it up readily and calms down a bit. Jeez, can't Gaelic afford food for this guy? He eats plenty. But no what? Uh, he's only being dramatic. Gaelic doesn't take off his undershirt, but he does roll up the bottom of it before leaning his forearms against the back of one of his chairs, exposing the broad palette of his hips and back. That design does capture an inaffable facet of my poor self. I'll get going on it. Note one. Uh, before I change my mind. I assume I do not need to spell out any potential consequences if you just pay from the artistic vision, correct? Alec rolls his eyes and pulls out a tattoo gun. It looks mostly how they do on Earth, but with a strip of greenish, almost biological light. Don't worry, your blood color is crystal clear. Dalek winces at the first press of the gun to his skin. Or maybe it's lasers? There's a glow happening back there. With the loosest sated, you're free to see what's going on. So you climb into the chair Gaelic's leaning against the back of, and peek over to watch. What's the deal with this anyway? Tattoos don't seem much like a vibe. There's no specific reason. I'm simply fleshing out my worldly experiences. But not one. Uh, intense physical pain, for one, though I am able to bear it. Uh, attaining visual knowledge of a new kind. He's checking off something from his bucket list, you would hopefully add. <laughs> No, no, not, not, not a bucket list, just a bucket list. <laughs> Gaelic flushes bright blue and jerks backwards, screeching like you haven't heard since you first met and traumatized him. Oh boy, you have no idea how, but that it was apparently extremely the wrong thing to say. Watch it. You're gonna make me fuck up your ineffable vision. No need to flip your thing, Pam. Gotta do what it takes to find a bucket, buddy. <laughs> I've been there. Gaelic <laughs> stares decidedly into the middle distance as he breathes in and out and repositions himself against the chair. This is extremely not what it's about. I'm perfectly capable of fulfilling my propagational duties, if not one. Thank you very much for your vote of confidence. This is not a thing I have to do, the thing I want to do, if not two. There is a significant semantic difference here. Uh, if it happens that spark concupiscent interest, so be it. Note three, uh, or deeper conversational interest. Yeah, whatever, I don't judge. You only have the barest grasp on what they're discussing here, but things are starting to click into place. You don't want to embarrass your potential new friend by calling him out on his crush even further, or by implying he can't find anyone to fill a quadrant with. You tell Malek that Gaelic is making his decisions based on his own personal, emotional, self-educating journey, and that's all. Yeah, yes, that is the heart of it, exactly. Good note one. Thank you. Felix smiles at you, and it's crooked and stiff on his face like he hadn't expected to put it there. You smile back and place your hand on top of his, white-knuckled against the back of the chair. He winces in pain only once more before Malek steps back, tilting his head to admire his handiwork. Add a little. Alec rolls his shoulders and twists his body around to check his new ink. Satisfied, he turns up to extend his hand to Malek. Uh, thank you for your time on such short notice. Would you like to stay to... Malek shakes his hand, but cuts him off there. No oh, thanks. I'm not much for the after party. See you around, Robobud. Nice to touch you, Buttonut. He tosses the gear back in his bag and nods at you both. On his way out, he pats the goat's head, now placid. One new friend is enough for one day, I suppose. Thank you for encouraging me to try something new. Uh, footnote one. It is kind of a rush, isn't it? I still do not completely understand you, but your penchant for flinging yourself wholeheartedly into precarious situations is fascinating. That is what you do best. 
You grin uncontrollably at the compliment. Uh, I might try employing that tactic a bit more in my daily life. Uh, if it would lead to newer, deeper grasp of the control condition. But as such, I have two confessions for you. He takes a deep breath and gets the rest out all in one go. One, I, I knew only an elementary amount of information about rainbow drinkers before I met you. And two, the reason for my front hinge jerk reaction at that time was because of my gorget shaped blind spot. Put a note one. Note one! <laughs> Come on. Oh, let's see what happens. We lose it all together. Uh, it is feelings based. You graciously do not let on that those are two of the most obvious pieces of information you've ever encountered. Ily clears his throat and thrusts his palm house toward you. Uh, now that we've taken care of that, uh, take a photo. Footnote 1. Uh, I can't reach. Subfootnote 1. Uh, observe me admitting these inadequacies with ease. <laughs> he turns around and you lovingly set up a shot. On his hip bone is a modest rendition of his sign, in indigo of course. It's framed by two sprigs of pine, crossed under it in a V. The look on his face as he turns back over his shoulder for the camera is the most self-satisfied thing you've ever seen. When you hand Gaelic his palm mask back, he fucks with it for a minute and then starts buzzing with notification after notification. He looks up at you, a smile creeping into the corner of his mouth. He bites it back like he's not sure what to do with the indefinable happiness he's experiencing. He hates it. <laughs> Victory! <laughs> <laughs>